Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tech Tuesday. And today we're gonna to be taking a look at reservoir pressure valves. Um, in particular, the new Radial Dynamics Reservoir Breather Valve, which will build up to 10 PSI maximum in a reservoir uh, while allowing outside air to freely flow back in to prevent a vacuum condition, um, which I'll cover in just a second. But um, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna take a look at four different pieces of hardware that have been used to try and build reservoir pressure. Um, now, as I've been developing this valve, I have to admit that I've learned a few things about all of these different pieces of hardware and realized that for the past several years, I've been doing all of this testing on the pump dyno behind me using a radiator style or coolant system tester like this to build pressure at will and show how the, uh, the reservoir pressure affects pump cavitation, um, which has an impact on pump wear and pump noise. But what I haven't actually done is uh, tested all of these different reservoir valves to see how much pressure each one actually ends up building inside of the steering reservoir. Um, the results were not quite what I expected, and uh, so I'm gonna show you today exactly what each one of these does. So the first thing we're gonna take a look at is a radiator cap. This is a Moroso 8 to 10 PSI cap, and this is the same, same one that I've been using on the Vortex Reservoir up until recently. So all of the first generation reservoirs use uh, this or equivalent um, rating of a uh, pressure cap. So if I pull out my coolant system tester here, which has an adapter to test radiator caps, I can go ahead and pressurize this, uh, this tubing here, and we can see that it doesn't really hold very much. And I'm gonna make sure that I'm fully seated here. And you can see that it holds a few PSI, but it doesn't really hold much. Now, if I push it very quickly, the needle jumps up and it's a little bit closer to that eight to 10 PSI, um, which is what this cap is rated for. Um, but the actual holding pressure is really only a few PSI. It doesn't, it doesn't hold nearly as much as I really expected it to. Um, and the reason is because any of these valves, which a radiator cap is a valve, um, that is going to be, uh, the pressure across it is going to, to be dependent on the rate of air or oil or coolant that's actually flowing past this cap. Um, so as that flow rate increases, there's a pressure curve that uh, also increases uh, proportional to that flow rate. And so what this cap is doing is it's mac limiting a maximum eight to 10 PSI while it's venting, but its actual holding pressure is gonna be significantly less. Um, Another type of valve that I've seen people use in the past and maybe not quite so often lately, but I've seen people try using a brake residual valve like this 10 PSI valve I got off of Summit Racing. And now this is designed to hold 10 PSI in your brake calipers. Um, for racing, it keeps a little bit, of, uh, little bit of drag on the brakes. But this valve was really designed to operate um, submerged in a, well not submerged, but in a completely flooded liquid environment, which if I go ahead and pressurize this, we'll see we get some resistance. Um, it gives me about 10 PSI maximum, depending on how fast I actually um, pump this, this hand pump, but it doesn't actually hold any air pressure. Um, and in a reservoir situation, that's really what we're designing the valve to do is to hold air pressure at the top of the reservoir, uh, not necessarily oil. Um, and so this valve, while it will give some resistance to flow, it's not necessarily gonna be giving us very good holding pressure in a reservoir. Now, this anti-splash valve or remote pressure valve um, is probably one of the more common ones that's out there on the market. And for years, I've just sort of blindly accepted that uh, the, the marketing that this valve would hold up to six PSI in a reservoir. Um, I actually just bought this one brand new recently so I could test it and I've also had the chance to test some that were installed on vehicles up to two years old and I've found the same results on all of them. Um, but I was expecting this valve to give me about six PSI of resistance and what we can see here is that this valve really 
gives me about one to two PSI while it's venting and it doesn't hold enough to actually register anything on the air pressure gauge. Now if I take the tubing off of here, you can hear a little bit of an air blast coming out. Um, so it is holding a slight amount of pressure above atmospheric, um, but clearly it wasn't even enough to actually register on the air pressure gauge. So um, it's, it kind of is uh, surprising to me that it took me this long to realize that this valve is not really holding as much actual pressure inside of the reservoir as I have expected it to be for years now. Um, so now we get to the Radial Dynamics remote uh, reservoir valve. And this is a directional valve, just like all of these options. Um, so the gray end is uh, marked to tank, and that's the, the port that will get plumbed to the reservoir vent port. Um, and so as I go ahead and pump this up, we'll see that it really gives us about a maximum 10 to 12 PSI as it's venting, and then it will hold an actual pressure of about six to seven PSI in the reservoir. And six to seven PSI actual pressure is very similar to what I typically test on the dyno. Um, and this is going to be very beneficial at reducing cavitation and reducing pump noise. And that's, we can see right now, is holding at that pressure pretty well. Um, if I go ahead and pump it up, it's of course going to increase pressure as it's venting, but then it drops back down. And in a reservoir, we're really not having to deal with a very high flow rate of air being vented out because it's only happening as fast as the fill level is actually rising due to thermal expansion. Um, if I take the tubing off, we can hear a little bit of that air blast coming out, but we can see from that pressure gauge that it was actually holding significantly more pressure than any of these other options. Um, even though the, the 8 to 10 PSI valve might be close to the same maximum um, under maximum airflow rates, uh, this valve will actually hold significantly more. If I plug the, uh, the pump here in the reverse port, so this would be the blue port that's open to atmosphere. You'd run normally just an open-ended tube down to your chassis, someplace safe that if there is any kind of oil leak, um, that it's not gonna be near any hot engine components or near the exhaust. And if I try to build any pressure outside of the reservoir, we can see that it just allows air straight through. So. Um, essentially, as the oil heats up and expands in your steering system, the valve is going to vent some air out of the system. And then once the, air, uh, once the oil cools back down and it returns to its normal fill level, if we don't let air back into the reservoir, then your steering system might be under a vacuum the next time you go to start the car. And uh, that can potentially result in um, excessive cavitation and whining of the pump. So this valve, um, is very simple to install. It's just push lock tubing right to the vent port on the top of your reservoir. Um, and it also is supplied with this cushioned P-clamp. So you can use this to very easily mount uh, this valve somewhere near your reservoir in your chassis, wherever it fits best. Um, it can be installed in any orientation, vertical uh, up, vertical down, horizontal. That doesn't really matter. Um, it doesn't necessarily need to be above or below the reservoir. Um, if it is above the reservoir, then that would allow any oil that does get into this vent line to drain back down, but it's really not a necessity. Um, so you can pair this valve with your uh, second gen Vortex reservoir, and uh, this hardware pairing here will give your pump the absolute best shot that it has to, uh, to deliver the highest performance that it is capable of for your steering system. These are available now on the Radial Dynamics website and social media shops. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free, to, as always, to reach out. I'm always happy to help. And um, other than that, until next time, hope you guys have a good week, and I'll see you later.